My interview with Eli Burton, the president and founder of My Tesla Adventure, is coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, boom, subscribe button. That way you won't miss anything moving forward. And let me give a quick shout out to one of my newer Patreons, Christopher Kinsey. Thank you so much for uh, joining my Patreon community. That's the only place where you can watch all of these videos live. Uh, live. And of course, thank you so much for contributing to my independent uh, channel uh, that's unbiased. And I hope fun uh, if you want to join me uh, uh there patreon.com slash e4 electric the link is also in the description of this video but let me talk about the my tesla adventure club you probably seen eli on my show quite a few times um there are two different two two or three different things he does for the the green energy community uh and one of them is basically having this kind of official tesla club uh we've uh, gathered this time at the tesla factory um by the way if you uh if you don't recognize where he's in the picture he is right here in his starman uh helmet and the official my tesla adventure cat uh it's pretty cool actually it belongs to one of the uh members uh his name escapes me, unfortunately. Sorry about that. But um, so that was fun. We gathered there, um, and then everybody drove caravan of like 30 Teslas uh, to Santa Cruz, California, and we had like really, really long lunch. I have another interview with Ryan McCaffrey, who is the host of uh, Ride the Lightning podcast. Um, I, I, I have it somewhere else on my channel. Um, and, uh, you know, it was kind of funny because here's what I saw. I don't know if you guys noticed if you've been at the, fac at the factory, but check this out. There's a Chevron flag uh, flying in the distance reminding us that, you know, maybe uh, maybe they missed us. At least that's how I'm I'm, I'm reading into this. But uh, that, I, I don't know how long it's been there. Just somebody noticed and I thought I would take a picture of that. But... Um, Let's talk about Eli because we wanted to talk about, you know, uh, you know, there are a lot of Tesla clubs there. Uh, but, you know, with, with all of the news, with customer service and overall ownership experiences, well, obviously I'm not having a good one myself, uh, is the Tesla community and fans are growing with the Model 3 fans. It's just kind of a different type of community and so forth. So it would be interesting, you know, it was interesting to talk to him about it. Of course, before that, uh, before we go into the interview, I just want to remind you that this video and this channel is sponsored by the Starman Gift and that's the that's the that's Eli's thing this is uh, uh, Eli is the founder uh, and creator of this there's a discount code in the description of this video uh, that way you guys can save yourself a few bucks and that discount code works for pretty much everything that they sell in that store so check that out all right without any further ado here's my interview with Eli Burton of my Tesla adventure all right, well, we're in an empty room, but this room was pretty full of people who are part of your club. Actually, this is a record uh, record turnout, if you ask me. Yeah, we had 50 people here today. And and quite a few cars as well. And, you know, you've been doing this for a while. Um, you know, the, you know, do you feel like the community is growing? Do you, I mean, obviously, there are more cars on the road, but do you feel like the enthusiasm is growing? Or do you think we just have more people in the community with the same enthusiasm? So I think what we have is, as all these new Model 3 members have joined, the most enthusiastic point period in time of owning a Tesla is the first three to six months. You've gotten comfortable with the car. You're starting to like really get, get into the experience. You're understanding how autopilot works. You're starting to make friends at superchargers. So what we have is we've had a lot of people who've owned it for a long time. And you know, just over time, even really cool things, you kind of get used to them a little bit. And we have all these new Model 3 owners, just a ton of them just re-injecting that enthusiasm enthusiasm into the community. And we have folks who've owned their Model S for three and four years, five years even, and they're now feeling excited about their car again, watching other people go through that same journey that they did. I did notice that because I just talked to quite a few people who just got their cars and I was like, Oh, I used to be that way, but I, you know what, you know what I mean? It's like, have you remember when we were like kids and we got a really awesome toy and we played for it for a while and then, you know, we just put it in a corner and then some, some, some guest, like a friend comes over and says, you got that toy? That's awesome. And you're like, oh, why don't I play with a toy? So I, I agree with you on that totally. And I would say a Tesla is the toy that has the longest shelf life of still being so much fun. Um, I'll tell you what, every time I still walk up to my car into a parking lot and I see it there, see it from the front, see it from behind, I kind of like the booty, just, you know. So, like, when I see it from behind and honestly, like, it makes me smile, they're like, that's my car. So, yeah, it's awesome. Do you, you know, have you noticed the difference between uh, the, the Model 3 owners or kind of, you know, I mean, younger generation and the good old Model S, Model X owners? And how do you think they're matching? I mean, we've, we've seen a mix today at, the, at this event. How do you think they're kind of, uh, is it the different type of enthusiasm? 
I think the enthusiasm is very much the same, like from the perspective, like for the owners who's buying the Model 3, to them, they don't feel any differently enthusiastic than the Model S folks did. Um, you know, they're definitely joining later in. There's a lot more people who've had to put, who had to invest in making these cars, but I think everybody at experiencing it, they have the same level of enthusiasm as everybody else did who's bought before. Now you mentioned that, and you know, this is a good point. Once again, something that I knew, but it's kind of like now that I'm realizing it again, is that you know, the interesting part is that you, know, you mentioned superchargers. You know, a lot of this networking and kind of almost every supercharger location, most of the time turns into kind of a fan club gathering, right? What other, like people don't do that gas stations. Like that, that's the stuff that I kind of missed, right? That's probably my biggest realization with having a Tesla was, when's the last time you made a friend at a gas station? When's the last time you had a conversation that was even pleasant at a gas station, let alone making a friend? And um, that's something that about joining the Tesla community, about buying a Tesla that I, I did, wasn't aware of ahead of time. And I don't think most people are. Unless you have a friend who brings you to an event like we do or the events that some of the other communities do, this is the surprise waiting for you. This is the Easter egg. Now, I have to mention that, you know, uh, this time around, and I think the theme has been in the last few months as a few YouTubers kind of started, you know, talking about, you know, issues with service. Um, obviously, it was number one question uh, that was crowdsourced for, for Elon and, and Tesla executives at their earnings call. I'm starting to hearing some complaints as well among the people. You know, service is important for happiness of the community, and Tesla has pretty much probably the most exciting community of all automakers, obviously, by far right now. Do you think if they're going to keep uh, kind of falling into this trap of, you know, abandoning the customer service, uh, you know, excellence levels, that might start uh, kind of sipping through the community and the most exciting members that we've seen here today? I think that currently the brand is so exciting and the community is so excited around it, it's buying them some air cover for the service deficiencies they have right now. I think if they have not made substantial improvements within the next six months, we will start seeing it to slowly start eroding some of that brand value and start eroding some of the community because people, there will be enough issues if it stays the way it is that people will be meeting and not talking about how much fun they're having. They'll be sitting there starting griping about their cars. But I think they still have time to fix it. I think, you know, Elon mentioned the Q1 call. That's going to be their priority. I hope that is the case. I hope that is the number one thing they focus on fixing because although it is very important to sell new cars, if you don't do a great job servicing on the back end, eventually word's going to get out on the street and people are going to say, hey, I don't know about buying a Tesla. I'm not sure if they're going to be reliable service. And the competitors who want to stop electric vehicles and stop Tesla are going to jump all over that. So I think they still have time to fix it. The time's now. Well, so, you know, you've had a pretty good experiences with yours. I had a really crappy with mine, but the truth kind of lies probably in between. So, I mean, this actually, this is probably an experience you don't know. I had my car for, I think I was in the end of the first week, and I just happened to be stopping to supercharge at my local Tesla store just to come in and say hello to the staff because I just got my car. I wanted to say hi to the guys that delivered it for me. And it stopped charging. My car stopped charging a week after having it. My initial reaction was I was really angry. Uh, the service manager, the service person at the time, all the service folks were gone. There was just some salesperson, and they weren't even going to give me a loaner car. So, like my initial first experience did not go very well. I got very upset with the guy. I was like, I just bought you know a hundred thousand dollar car. I need a loaner, and ultimately they took care of that. And I don't think I think I didn't have my car for about three weeks initially. But what I found was I got my Tesla loaner. They took care of the problem. They gave me my car back, and I got to go on my way. And that's what made it okay. They took care of it. They ultimately took care of it. But no, I, I had my fair share of service issues early on. I just haven't had any sense then. So that's why you don't hear me talking about it. Well, now that you've probably heard so many different people talk about it, what do you think, where do they start? I mean, obviously, you know, that's a little too many complaints probably for, you know, obviously, even Elon's, uh, you know, taste. But where do you think they should start? I mean, it's a big problem. They're still busy making Model 3s and moving forward. They've been trying to be profitable and continue to be profitable. So it's not like they have all this time and money. But where would you start if, if, if you were to give them an advice? So in my experience working for organizations, if you have a problem, it, the problem always starts with management. So I think somewhere very high up, somebody needs to be assigned from the responsibility to top down in the organization to fix this problem. And I think a lot of people are gonna to need to get fired. And I think that's probably one of the challenges they run into right now is they're growing, which means they need people who have experience with the car. So it's not as easy to just say, all right, we're gonna fire half of our service techs and replace them. 
with who? Who are these people who've experienced a car? But um, I'd love to see an executive assigned with just this problem, just this problem only, and be given the resources to go out and replace staff, replace managers, and set up incentive structures that actually, that actually make sure that good service is what's rewarded. And I guess I can also would 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 add that you know this year there's a competition that's that's growing, um, and maybe much like Tesla, you know, kind of drag everybody into the ultra electrification of their fleets. Maybe the legacy manufacturers can uh, drag Tesla back into good customer service. That there's something to be said about that. Yeah, I think that's one of the positive impacts of market competition. Tesla led with the most amazing tech. And once the other folks start catching back up, all of a sudden those other things are going to become more important. So, yeah, I agree. So do you expect uh, the, the uh, sort of membership and turnouts of, 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 your, of your club, of your, of your gatherings to grow? Or do you think it will level off and kind of be, become a, like a, more of a steady community? So I think the bigger thing we're going to run into is the ability to handle the growth for having events. We can only fit so many people in a restaurant. You know, this is the first event where we've had to book an entire room. I have a feeling the next time we're going to have to book an entire restaurant. Um, no, I, I think I, I'm not concerned about growth. It's going to be much more about how do we do events in ways that we can get more people involved who want to be. Actually, for this event, we had to turn down 15 people over a week and a half out because simply we had no more room. All right, man. Well, I'm looking forward to the next one. Um, if you have something planned, can you tell my audience what to expect? And obviously, they need to sign up early. And this is for North, uh, North California, really. Our events are primarily in Northern California. But I think the real opportunity of what I'm saying that like our, our events are going to be are starting to be full and there's only so much we can grow. If you're somebody who's passionate about the community, you own a Tesla, and you've thought about starting your own community, do that. The community is enormous. It needs more people to step up and be leaders and organize these events. So if this is something you're into, if you even come to one of our events and you want to do something on your own, we'll support you. We'll promote you if you want to get that going. That's fine if some of the people coming to our events currently end up going to yours instead. Look, that's not a problem. We want to see more organization happening in the Tesla community so more owners are out connecting. And we should also probably manage that there are you know, in almost uh, every large city of us and, and, and uh, in, in the U.S. at least, but probably Canada and Europe, uh, there is a, a official Tesla club, an unofficial Tesla club. So it's just a matter of kind of finding them on Facebook or, or other forums and, and joining. With it. So this is not exclusive to North California only. So I kind of, you know, I would encourage everybody to find their own uh, sort of uh, circle of Tesla friends in, in their area. Correct. There's a lot of Tesla clubs across the United States already. And recently there's been a massive growth and Tesla clubs in Europe. So I've been looking at some of the numbers recently and like there's a new one popping up every day in a number of different regions of Europe. China's even now starting to expand a lot more with their Tesla owners clubs. Um, yeah, the best place to find these because it, you know it's 2019 is search up on Facebook, search up on Twitter. You'll find the presence for these clubs. Unless you're in China, then that's all prohibited. Yeah, but if you're in China, you're probably not seeing this video anyway. Probably not. I don't think they let Alex pass the great firewall. But uh, if you like what we're doing and you want to follow the My Tesla Adventure events, uh, you can follow us on Facebook. Uh, we're on Instagram and on Twitter at My Tesla Adventure. Uh, we also have a website, which is MyTeslaAdventure.com. All right. Uh, as always, it's fun to hang out with Eli. I think he's the most frequent guest on my show at this point. Um, and uh, he's got his own uh, uh, YouTube channel and he's mainly on Instagram. That's where uh, most of his posts are. You basically go at my Tesla adventure and you can find him on Twitter and everybody else. So uh, it is just a fun uh, feed to follow. If you're ever in North California and you have a chance to join him for one of his amazing trips, uh, it's it's a must. The community, I got to tell you, it, it, it's always always a, a, a great community and a great trip. It's very well uh, organized. So I definitely recommend you guys try it out. And even if you're not in the Northern California, find a local club if you drive a Tesla. And if you if, if not, the, the new the new brands, the the e-tron and Nero and so forth, they, they got their own little thing going as well. There's a there are fan clubs growing across the country and the world as as, as companies build more and more of them. So I recommend you guys find your own community because it is always fun. Let me know in the comment section what do you guys think about the community. Do you belong to one and uh, why do you think it is fun or maybe not fun in your area? Definitely let me know. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.